So in this week's release from IHME on the COVID pandemic and forecasts out till March 1st, uh, we see increasing evidence in the Northern Hemisphere that the expected winter surge has started to unfold. Uh, reductions in cases and estimated infections and hospitalizations have essentially stopped in the U.S. and we uh, and starting to turn around. And uh, many countries in Western Europe are even farther ahead of us in the sense that uh, numbers are going up quite quickly in places like the Netherlands or Denmark, but also in Germany now and in a number of other countries. So we have this general pattern of rising numbers um, due to the three things coming together in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, winter seasonality, waning immunity from those who got vaccinated. And now we understand much better with much more evidence that vaccine derived immunity for protection against infection does wane quite considerably by six months. So we now have many people that were vaccinated early in the Northern Hemisphere who are now uh, likely susceptible. And so that's the, the second factor coming together. And then the third factor that's fueling uh, these uh, winter increases is the fact that people are much less cautious than last winter. Mask use is much lower. It's below 40% in the US. It's slightly higher than that in Europe, but much lower than a year ago. And people have mobility levels that are really uh, just below pre-COVID baseline, as opposed to 20, 30 percent uh, below pre-COVID baselines. Put those together, we expect that despite progress on vaccination, uh, we will see a winter surge. And the question really comes is how big will that northern hemisphere winter surge be? In our current models, it's a relatively modest surge, nowhere near as large as last year. Uh, still enough to put great pressure on hospitals when they have the combination of expected flu uh, cases as well as COVID-19, but uh, much less than last year. That forecast may well be um, optimistic because we have not yet built into the modeling that we are releasing right now the explicit analysis around waning immunity uh, for vaccine-derived immunity, and we have not built in waning immunity for natural from uh, derived from natural infection or, or prior infection. That will come in our release in two weeks, we expect. And that should suggest uh, a, a winter surge that is possibly larger, although efforts to roll out boosters will uh, counteract that tendency for a bigger epidemic, as will, uh, at least in the US, uh, authorization for emergency use of vaccinating children 5 to 11. And roughly about half of parents of children 5 to 11 are, have indicated that they're, they'll get their child vaccinated. So we do expect a bump in vaccination rates in the US of something around about four percentage points for in terms of the total population. So many forces at play that may make our uh, modest winter surge larger uh, than we suggest, or it may come out to be uh, as we see in, in, in the current set of uh, models. Elsewhere in the world, we see increasing transmission, although it's not dramatic, in many regions, in a number of countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. Now, for the first time, we're seeing uh, either flattening trends or slight increases in transmission in a number of countries in South America, although it's, it's you know, they're heading into summer in the southern parts of, of South America. And we're seeing increasing transmission in some parts of um, uh, Southeast Asia. So clearly, uh, we think those increases are driven mostly by behavioral relaxation, that people are just not as careful anymore. And that is likely the main driver. There's no new major variants yet on the horizon. Uh, and if anything, the other, these are not regions that are moving into the, the winter season. So much to follow, but if you step back at the global level, Clearly the declines that the world was seeing that began in late August, early September for infections, and then by mid-September for cases and deaths 
uh, have essentially stopped and we're starting to see at the global level flattening and actual reversals. So we are, COVID is not over as some people seem to think it is. And in fact, we expect we're entering a phase where we will have to pay more attention to COVID, uh, certainly over the Northern Hemisphere winter. 